sound tech a hand who has figured out some of our feedback issues. <laughs> See, check this out. So far, so good. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to Harvest Church. My name is Natasha Snelson, and I'm the associate pastor here at Harvest, and just so good to see all of your faces. Um, if it is anyone's first time here at Harvest today, I'm not seeing any at this point yet, would you be so brave as to raise your hand so we can recognize you? Yeah, Bobby, you look like a stranger. <laughs> Anyways, all of you, welcome. Um, hope that you've been enjoying the beautiful weather, except for Monday. That was, a, that was definitely weird. Anyways, um, our sound is awesome today, um, but you'll have to bear with us. I hope you have your Bibles. Who would have thought you would need your Bibles in a church? <laughs> so um, when we do all of our scripture today, uh, Bobby will be very clear about giving references so you can check them out. Um, we're just having some delays with our screens there, but they should be good to go for songs and worship and all of that. But I think, um, again, I just laugh at the enemy when he thinks he's getting in the way with technology. You're going to challenge a church to bring Bibles? We'll take that challenge. So anyways, um, just a reminder, we have corporate prayer happening at Harvest on Wednesday nights at 6.30. Powerful time. Um, and I think after today, everyone's going to be really excited for what we can do together there. So I think that is it for announcements at this point. Um, oh, one thing I was going to say with scripture, um, if you have your smartphones, you version, we have all of our uh, sermon notes on there. And that's where we'll have all the scripture and where we'll have Bobby's PowerPoint that would not have gone to waste because it will be displayed on you version. You'll just open that Bible app. Go to more, and you'll see Harvest's live event there. Click on that, and you'll have everything you need to know from our online connection card. That's what I was going to say. Um, we have paper connection cards in front of you, but we have a digital one on version, and that will help us update any information that we might not have correct, because over the last few months, um, you may have supposed to have gotten deliveries, but... Um, it's amazing that there are people we don't know in the world that actually got your deliveries, and we'll call that divine. But if you didn't get some of these deliveries, make sure that we have the correct information for you. So let's uh, pray and then get on with praise and worship. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for who you are, for your goodness, for your love, for your mercy. And we thank you that in you we have power. In you we have all we could ever need. Um, we just glorify you and thank you that you just, you wait to come and show up among us, God. And I thank you for where your presence is. There is fullness of glory, God. And so we just exalt you today, and we look forward to giving you alone all the glory. Amen. Stand with us. Um, I don't know about you, and I'm a little bit biased, but have you not enjoyed having Krista and Sebastian here to help us lead worship? Um, for those of you who don't know, Krista is my daughter. And Sebastian is my son-in-law, so I have taken advantage of the fact that they were here for the last month, a little more than a month. Um, but this is their last Sunday. So they are heading back to Nebraska and then eventually back to New York City, although I'm not sure why. Um, <laughs> actually, I do know why. Um, but if you get a chance, tell them how much fun it's been having them here. Um, just in case, we're hearing a lot about people who think they're in charge right now. We've got this medical professional, and we've got this organization, everybody telling you that they know what's going on, and they are in charge. Well, I got news for you. We know who is in charge. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. One, two, three, four.
sing this next song. This is a new one. This was a new one for me, but I want you to pay special attention to these words. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom.
You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without
for not only taking care of us, but for lifting up our hearts. Thank you for listening to us when words fail us. Thank you for knowing what it is we need so much more than we do. And Lord, we just ask that whatever you have to say to us today, we hear it. We hear it through the music. We hear it through the spoken word. We hear it through the Bible verses that we read, through the scriptures. Lord, just speak to us in a powerful way this morning. We love you, Father. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Harvest, and good morning all those HC kids here in the house, yeah, and on all those online, hope to see you guys all soon in the house. Um, just a few announcements, um, HC kids, we're working on trying to reopen, so we sent out a parent survey, um, it is on our, um, we're sending it out by email, we put it out on both of our Facebook pages. And if the kids got a packet today, they also have one in there, which is blue. So if you can turn those in so we can hopefully get going on the opening HC kits, that would be awesome. We need everybody's input, so um, the more the merrier because we need to have all bases covered. Um, so we are still planning for our VBS. It will be um, August 17th through the 21st. And um, we need volunteers, so if you could volunteer for even just a little bit or the whole time, um, every little bit helps. Um, without volunteers, we can't have VBS, so we need some volunteers. Um, you can see me after church or even send me an email or even send it to the office as well. Um, right now, since we don't have HC Kids, um, you can go online. Um, and uh, we have uh, daily challenges still going. Um, we'll probably keep going. Um, Erica's been doing a great job doing those this week, so um, she's going to continue doing that since I am back to work. So, um, And there's also fun um, holidays that we're doing this month, so um, those, those are pretty fun. So um, I think that's all my announcements. Um, don't forget to sign up for the summer experience as well. That is still open. Um, if you need help with that, you can talk to me afterwards. Um, I know we have quite a few from our church that have signed up, so that is awesome. Um, okay, I think that's all. So um, we'll pray for the kiddos, and then I will pass it up. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for all the kiddos here in the house and watching online. We pray for all those families during this time, and we pray for a transition back to HC Kids um, in the near future. So we pray that um, all the families and um, kids want to come back and are still learning about you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. There's some youth that are here today, and I sent out an email and a Snapchat um, invite for that free kids camp that's happening here at Harvest. I think it's July 23rd, 24th, and 25th. It's a Thursday evening, um, midday Friday, and midday Saturday. So, um, if you haven't gotten that snap from me or if you haven't gotten my email, please see me so that I can update my information for you. Again, it's free, free, free. Uh, it's going to be a blast. And again, it's going to be here. It's not all day. Um, so some of you guys, some of you, the youth would probably be like, oh, all day. Um, no, it's not all day. But um, it's super easy. I mean, I did it quickly. Red registered Adrian and like it literally takes like two to three minutes so I don't think you're gonna have to like fill out this huge old form because um, that's not the case so if you haven't done it please do it quickly because uh, you get a box and if you happen to not register and you don't get your box in the mail it doesn't mean that you can't still attend so um, keep that keep that in mind as well 
All right, so we're going to get ready to receive the tithe and the offering for the support of ministry. Can I get a woot woot? All right. I think that's going to be my tradition, FYI. <laughs> I like everybody to get excited to give because I'm always excited to give and grab from my purse. Make sure Bobby gets ready to give too. Um, so anyway, um, one other thing, you, you know, that song that we were singing that, um, Lord, let us see, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Amen. We sang this morning. And that's because his glory is an experience. Amen. When you experience his glory, when you experience his glory, you are healed. When you experience his glory, you are set free. When you experience all those things in Jesus fall, all those negative things fall off of you. Amen. His experience brings healing. His experience brings freedom. His experience brings healing. His experience brings financial blessings. His experience brings everything that you need in this earth to do what he called you to do. How many know, how many adults in here know that when you're a kid, you say, this is what I'm going to be doing when I'm a grown up and you can fill in the blank. And sometimes we're walking in some of those things. Amen. I know I wanted to be a nurse, but I never thought that I would be standing here in Harvest Church in Laramie, Wyoming, being born and raised in Las Cruces, New Mexico, which is 12 hours south of here. Amen. And 45 minutes from the Mexican border. I never would have thought I would be here. So don't underestimate God. He has huge plans for your life. It doesn't matter if you're uh, being carried around in a carrier by your parent or if you're in your 70s, 80s, 90s. God has a plan for your life and he's not done with you yet. Everybody take a deep breath. If you have breath in your lungs, there's still purpose in your life. So don't bend over and don't get lazy and sit on the couch. Get up, find out what God has for you and do it. Amen. To promote his kingdom. All right. Amen. So as we give this morning, um, those of you who have children with you, I want you to open up your purse, your wallet, your whatever. And if you have a dollar bill, if you have a quarter, a penny, whatever you have, hand it to your kid. Here's why. Um, when I grew up, my mom took us to church. We went to a Catholic church as a kid. And so as soon as it was time for tithe and offering, my mom, my grandma would open up their purse and pull out a coin purse or whatever. And based on your age, I think I've talked about this before, is what we got. So there was five of us. So my oldest brother probably got a quarter. Maybe my next sister got a dime, a nickel, a couple of pennies, etc. But the point was that I am about to be 40 years old. And I have not forgotten the fact that even as a child, my mom taught me to give. Amen. Amen. When we would have friends come over, people come over, we would right away you offer them something to eat and offer them something to drink. Amen. Even if you're not, I mean, in a Mexican house, trust me, we were just in New Mexico and it doesn't matter if you just ate. If you go over to the next person's house, you got to eat again. <laughs> right. Amen. And it's because it's the giving, it's the spirit of giving. And I want to encourage that in everyone today. Be a, have that spirit of giving. Amen. Teach your children that, that um, quality of giving. Amen. All right. So get your uh, seed ready. We're going to lift it up to heaven because it all comes from Jesus anyway. There's scripture that says that he gives us the power to gain wealth. So how many know you're not all that smart in yourself, but because God <laughs> gave you the wisdom and the ability to be smart and to have a job that he blessed you with, etc. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you today. We honor you. We glorify you. We thank you, Father God, because you are the great I am. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no one greater than you, Jesus. You are at the top of the top, Father God. And I am so thankful that 
I know you and you know me. I am so thankful that you are who we praise and worship here in this house, in Harvest Church, in Laramie, Wyoming, Father God. We worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Father God. And so I thank you for that first and foremost, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for everyone that is giving this morning. I thank you that, that the giving today is not just for today, but it's for tomorrow. It's for the advancement of your kingdom. It's for their personal blessing. It's for their personal revelation of who you you are and who they are in you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that there is not going to be any lack in, in this house or in any of those houses of those that are giving this morning. And Father, we will be sure to give you the glory and the honor for all that you are and all that you do for us, Father God. Father, we love you this morning. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. And I thank you for it. And I declare all these things done in the mighty name of Jesus and all those that believe shouted, Amen. There has always been something about the high places of the earth, an ancient, immovable, and humbling magnificence. God himself is often found on the mountaintop. On Mount Ararat, God restarted civilization when he saved Noah and commanded him to be fruitful and multiply. He demonstrated his power on Mount Carmel when he sent fire down on Elijah's offering. God provided on Mount Moriah a sacrifice to take Isaac's place. He taught his people how to live when he called Moses up Mount Sinai to give him the Ten Commandments. Jesus often went up a mountain to pray, and it was there that God glorified him at the Transfiguration. Yet, in our own lives, we often hesitate when we find a mountain before us. We wonder why God can't make our way smooth, a flat, well-traveled road. But as we climb, we find that we grow stronger. Our suffering produces endurance. As we put distance between us and our noisy lives, we find time for prayer and quiet reflection. Our perspective changes. We realize how small we are, how dependent on God, and at the same time, the world and its troubles grow smaller and less imposing. Our ascent shows God that we are willing to make an effort to press on and trust that he is with us and that somewhere further up the slope, victory is waiting for us. Amen. That's good. Uh, I got a bunch of mics here. We'll set this up later next time. We'll be ready. You know, it's interesting. Did you pick that video, Sue? That's a good one. All during worship, that exact verse was coming to me through, through worship. And I think we're going to read it. Let's read it to open up real quick. Because there's something that God wants to do. He's God. He can do whatever he wants. But how many know he's waiting for somebody to work through? Do you realize that God wants to work through you to change your atmosphere, to change your sphere of influence, to, to cause God to be glorified here on this earth? We're going to read from, uh, it's uh, Romans 8, starting in verse 18. It said, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Somebody say, in us. Verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creation, the world, eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The earth is waiting for you to be revealed because you carry that spirit of God. You carry His name. Amen. How many are carriers of Jesus' name? So there is power in you. 
And the earth is waiting for you to get up and do something. The nation, you might, I don't want to get political, you know, but if you're on the Republican side or the Democratic side, your hope is in Jesus, amen? And the, all creation eagerly waits for the reeling, revealing of the sons of God. You, how, how many have you been born again? You are children of the Most High. The earth is waiting for you. You carry something so special. It would say priceless. The world is just waiting for you to exhibit it, to open it out, to let it flow, that out of your bellies would flow rivers of living water. Amen? Come on. We better shout to Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for life. And that life, you give it to us more abundantly, God. I thank you that you saved us, that you have set us apart, that you have made us holy, that you have made us righteous in your eyes, God. And I just pray, God, for Laramie right now. I lift up Laramie to you, God. I lift up businesses. I lift up small businesses, people that are uh, in business, God, that employ people. I pray, Jesus, that yours uh, would give them insight, wisdom, Father God, that you would give them ideas uh, to continue to provide for their families, God. I thank you, Jesus, that as we do, we will glorify you, God, and we will reveal you to all that are around us, God. Not by our strength, God, but by your spirit that dwells in us. I pray, Jesus, that you would uh, just put a fire in our bellies, God. That we wouldn't hold back the gift that is inside of us, God. Lord, that it would pour out. That it would bring life into our situation, God. I pray for the nation. I pray for our uh, governors and our president, God. I pray protection over them. I pray for wisdom to be upon them, Lord, as they continue to lead us and guide us, Father God, in the civil realm, God. But I thank you, Jesus, that you poured out your spirit on the day of Pentecost. And, Lord, that we have been filled with your spirit. We have been endued with power. We have been clothed with ability to do your work. On this earth. And so I thank you today Jesus. I pray that if there is anything lacking in anybody that is in this building. God Lord that is hearing us online. Father if there be any lack. If there be any need of healing Lord. That you would touch them right now. Right now touch them in the name of Jesus. Lord I thank you and I praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said. Amen. Amen. How many are glad to be in the house today? God is good all the time, amen. We, we remember uh, Brent Parker. I don't know if you guys remember him. He says, God is good all the time to me. And we have to say that, yeah, because we are his children. And God is so good and he loves us so much. I want to open up with a scripture. We've been reading it these past couple weeks. It's out of Luke chapter 24. And in verse 49, and we do have it. So it's there. Again, as Natasha mentioned, uh, there may be some issues and difficulties with our, with our uh, technology, but we're praying for it. And if you don't have the Version app, you can get it there and follow our live events on that as well. But in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, it says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. This power we talked about, being endued with power, is being clothed with ability. What is that ability? The ability to live a righteous life. The ability to witness of Jesus Christ to a, wor to a world that truly needs it. To be able to be effective in prayer. More effective in prayer, right? That we can pray and not just, well, Lord, thy will be done. We know God's will. That you would prosper and be in health. 
We know God's will because he's giving his, us his word. And we are to pray the word to him. Pray it and believe it. Amen. And we try to get away with this. Well, you know, if you, God, think, you know, it's going to be okay or, you know, you could do whatever because you're God. Yes, he can. But he has endued us with power that we could approach the throne of grace in boldness, no fear, coming to him, knowing that he hears our prayers. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so we need to take this... Uh, that it's something that God has given us, has poured out, and, and we need to run with it. We need to put it on, be clothed with ability to do what he has called you to do, whatever that may be. The world needs it more than ever now. Um, it doesn't take you a few minutes watching TV that you see all the craziness that's going on. But God is faithful, amen? God is faithful. And he needs you. The world, all creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Amen. And so we need to live for God. And ultimately we need this power to be to walk with him, to be clothed with ability so that we can walk righteously before the Lord. How many know God is holy? Amen. He has declared it. He says, "I am holy, therefore you be holy." Paul reiterates that in, also in the New Testament. But he's a holy God. And therefore we should be holy. And so what does holy mean? Well, consecrated, set apart, or separated. Separated from what? From sin, from the world, from what, that what hurts God's heart. Amen? But we are to live as to be dedicated totally, totally to God and totally separated from the sin of the world. That's what, that's what being righteous is. We are to live as to be dedicated totally to God and totally separated from the sin of the world. You can't get any more straight than that. But for some reason, we want to bend the rules. You know, we like to bend them and break them and say, well, you know, it's not that bad. I didn't kill anybody. I just said a little lie. But you allow the enemy to come in. You open up the door. And so we have to live a life that is holy before God. To be totally dedicated to God. Totally separated from sin and of the world. And you say, well, Bobby, I'm human. I'm not perfect. I'm not God. You're not. But God has promised that he would pour out of his spirit. And now God lives in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in you and empowers you to do all that you couldn't do on yourself. You can't live a holy life. You can't do it by yourself. That's why you have to be baptized by his spirit. That's why you have to receive the fullness of the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. It's not just an it or it's not just a feeling or a chill that goes up your spine or goosebumps that you get on your arm. And for some reason, I'm getting goosebumps right now. <laughs> but that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God Almighty living inside of you. In John, it talks, Jesus was telling his disciples that the Holy Spirit is with you. He was talking to his disciples. But soon he said the Holy Spirit will be in you. And so we've been talking about this uh, spirit-filled, the spirit-filled life. And I gave you the definition of, uh, of, um, of, now, yeah, Jack Hayford. <laughs> I don't know why I drew a blank, but it said, The spirit-filled life was to live in the relationships and resources of the Creator's original intention for humankind. That's what the spirit-filled life, life is. But we have to live a righteous life, a holy life, because God is holy. And this is where we need to remember that God is a holy God. He has called us to live righteously. Be ye holy as I am holy. And so we have to remember that and rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to live this righteous and holy life before God. 
It's very important. It's very important. And righteous, what is being righteous truly is? You do good deeds or what is it? Well, it's being in right standing with God. God cannot be around sin. He doesn't tolerate it. He, doesn't, he can't be by it. But that's why he gave his son Jesus to die for us, that his blood would be shed, and his blood has covered us, has washed us. And therefore we can come into God's presence. We can be in right standing with the Lord. And we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. So God is good. God is righteous, and he wants to give you a life, an awesome life, a life full of power, a life full of faith, a life that you would truly wear his t-shirt, right? That you could say, yeah, you know, the, you've got businesses that have their logo on their shirts, and, but you're carrying Jesus right here. You're carrying it. And if you say, wow, am I carrying Jesus' name? Hmm, maybe I should be a little nicer to my co-workers. Maybe I should listen to my mom and dad. Maybe I should, you know, help out in the community. That's right. That's what we should do. And not because you're trying to win your way to heaven, but because you have been empowered. And you want to live righteously. Because He has been so forgiving to us, so loving to us. That's what compels us to do good in this way. And I think we sang a song last week about it. It's so good that God has come. His love towards us has compelled us to walk righteously. And His Spirit has allowed us and empowered us to do that. Because we can't do it all alone. And so I want to walk through just a few things. Towards the end of the service here, we're going to pray for people. If you've never been Spirit-filled, to, to receive that infilling of the Holy Spirit. And for those that you say, well, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. That you would get a refreshing, a renewing. Because that's what the world needs right now. We need a renewing, a stirring up of the gifts that are inside of us. Amen. But I wanted to still talk, stay on this. We talked about in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, the apostles were all, to, the, the 120 were all together in the upper room. And there was a sound of a rushing and mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, <clears throat> but as we go through the scriptures in, in uh, Acts, I wanted to start in chapter 8. In chapter 8, we have Philip that goes to Samaria and he preaches to the, uh, oh, we've got the scripture up there. I won't read it just yet, but just a little back drop. Philip was going to preach in Samaria, and he f f begins to preach the Word of God, to teach him the things that God has done, that he was sacrificed for our sins. And many believed on, on the Word. Many believed in what he was saying, but also Philip was uh, healing people and casting out devils and, and making people whole. And so they saw this, and, and they believed in the Word of God. There was a sorcerer named Simon in Samaria at that time, and he also came to belief in Jesus Christ from the words that Philip preached and the demonstration that he had that he healed and he cast out these spirits. And so Simon is one who believed on the Lord and, and uh, not too much longer after that, uh, the apostles heard that the people received the word of God in, in Samaria. And so these apostles in in Jerusalem, they were sent word, uh, Peter and John, and they went to Samaria to go ahead and go pray. They said, oh, there's some disciples there. We need to go and speak to them. And we'll read from starting in verse 14. It says, Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had not fallen upon none of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And so Philip was there earlier. He was preaching the word. He was with signs and wonders following. And he brought belief into all those, I mean, 
people believed on the Lord Jesus. But there was something that there was still lacking. We talked about that our salvation is an event, an initial event that happens. But yet the baptism of the Holy Spirit being endued with power is a subsequent event to our salvation. It could happen right at the same moment. But it also is a subsequent. You have to be saved to be empowered. Amen. And so we see that here. And John and John and Peter hear this. They said, oh, there's some disciples. Over there. Let's go and pray for them that they would receive the Holy Spirit. So it was important uh, for, the, for the disciples that they would be empowered to live the life that God has called them to be. Amen. And it doesn't say anything about there that they spoke in tongues or <clears throat> did any kind of prophecy or did miracles themselves. But it says that they received the Holy Spirit. But what I think is interesting, if you read further in verse 18, Simon, the sorcerer, was there and he saw. He saw the disciples pray. Excuse me. He saw Peter and John pray for the disciples there in Samaria. <clears throat> and Simon saw something. The Bible doesn't tell us what he see, but he asked for this power. Because Simon was a sorcerer, he dealt with sorcery and, and, and stuff with signs and stuff. So I'm assuming that Saul, excuse me, that Simon saw something after Peter and John prayed for these that believed in Samaria. And when Simon saw, this is verse 18, it says, And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands and the Holy, that the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money, and you have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness and pray God if he perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you and and he does Simon repents it says then Simon answered and said pray that the Lord pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken come upon me and so Simon was convinced he obviously had a background of you know sorcery and, and he was a sorcerer so you know what do we do naturally sometimes we fall back into our who we were who we grew up to be amen but it's never too late to repent. If we did something wrong, you know, I, I remember a friend of mine, he's, he's uh, from Cuba. And some stories I've heard is that, you know, they believe in witchcraft a lot. And when your kids would be sick there, you know, little kids and the infants, they would, do, the grandma would come do all kinds of witchcraft to heal. He, you know, the grandma loved the baby. But she didn't know anything better than to do what she was taught. But he would say, no, Grandma, no, Jesus will heal you. You know, I'm getting off track, but that is good too because, you know, we, we, us as natural people, we, we come to God with our things. We want to say, God, use me in this. And he says, no, I need you to rid it all. I need you to be filled with the Holy Spirit that you can do our, my work that I've called you to do. Amen. And so, but Simon saw something happen when Peter laid hands on them. I believe that's why he wanted to buy this power. If, he, if I were just to go and lay hands on somebody and pray and nothing happened, well, that sorcerer would have said, well, big deal, right? But something happened. Maybe they prophesied. Maybe they spoke in tongues. Maybe they just glorified God in excellence. Moving on to chapter 9. This is the story of Saul. Saul's conversion. I mean, you know, Saul was the persecutor of the church, but he had an encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus where a bright light shone and he knocked him off his horse and he fell and, and blinded him. And the, and the voice from, from heaven said, Saul, Saul, why, why do you persecute me? And, and Paul says, you know, who is this? And he says, this is the Lord Jesus who you're persecuting because he was a persecutor of the church. And so he's blind and he's led into the city. And Ananias is, is a man of God and, and he gets a vision from the Lord. He, uh, he, he gets a word from the Lord to go pray for this Saul of Tarsus that he would receive his sight. And he says, no way. He says that Paul is, is he's, or Saul, he's, he's uh, putting handcuffs on all the Christians. He's, he's persecuting them. He's driving them out. And you want me to go to him? He says, yep, he's my chosen vessel that he's going he's gonna to be used for my glory. 
And so Ananias is, is obedient in that. And he goes to, to where, Paul, where Saul, Saul is at. And I'm going to read from verse 17 it's in chapter 9. It says, And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So Ananias went to go pray for Paul and that he would be filled with the Holy Spirit because there was a call of God on Paul's life, to, on Saul's life at that time. We know him as Paul. Amen. So now I will refer to him as Paul from here forward. <laughs> Paul needed to be empowered to do his work for the Lord. Amen. And so Ananias had to go and pray for him, for his healing, for his eyes, and to be filled with his spirit. It says then immediately uh, there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his eyes. And at once he arose and was baptized. And that he, I believe he was baptized in water. And so he received the Lord, and received it, received his calling, received what he was going to do, and he was empowered because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we go to chapter 10, where we hear the word of uh, Cornelius. Now this is a Gentile, not a Jew, not of Jewish descent, but he was a Roman or a Italian. Uh, we'll read it from... Acts chapter 10, verse 1, it says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. So Cornelius was a man that loved God. He wasn't of Jewish background. He was an Italian. And he loved God, though, it says. And he prayed and he gave alms. And so Cornelius gets a word from the angel that comes and says, your prayers have been heard. And he remembers his gifts and all that he did for, for, his, for the poor and all the things that he did. And he says, send for Peter and he'll tell you what to do. And so Cornelius sends out a couple people to go look for Peter. The Lord reveals to where Peter would be. He would be... And, and he sent his, these two guys to go get him and to, to go call him. Say, hey, the Lord appeared to him. But Peter at that time, he... I wanted to maybe save this for a little bit later, but... <laughs> Peter had an issue with Gentiles. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he didn't really like to associate with people other than Jews. Amen? Although he was filled with the Spirit and... God deals with him. I think even, I remember even Paul rebukes him at a certain time because of his, you know, his, I don't want to say, you know, just his act, his racism towards Jews. Amen? But like we said, we bring our junk sometimes. Amen? But God gets rid of it. Rid of it. He dissolves it all. Amen? So Peter comes, and during this time, Peter is getting a vision. He's hungry, and he goes into a trance, and he sees this uh, food coming down. But it's, you know, food that is not appropriate for Jews to have because it's unclean. And, and the word comes, it says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter says, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. He was getting this vision because he had a... He had a, something to do, a mission to do, that these guys were going to come, and he was going to go have to pray for these Italian people, Cornelius' household. And so they come, and with that vision, Peter says, okay, yeah, he accepts. He takes some Jewish buddies with him, and they go to, to Cornelius' house. And it's interesting, when they get to Cornelius' house, Cornelius sent out an invitation. He, his house is full with people. Amen. And so Peter begins to preach the word and to teach all the things of Jesus Christ that he was beaten and bruised and all the things that he suffered. And it says that even while he was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of them that were in the house. 
in chapter 10, verse 44, it says, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. Those were Peter's buddies that went with him. As many came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So they they heard them speak. They were magnifying God. We talked about how being filled with the Spirit allows us to worship God at another level. To give us power and, and purpose in our worship. And so they... So then Peter baptizes all of them and says, you know, can anyone forbid water for these that should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And then we go on to chapter 19. And in verse 1 it says, And it happened when Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all. And so these are some believers that hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so they said, no, we have never even heard of it. And so Paul teaches them and lays hands on them. And they receive the the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're filled with the Spirit. And they begin to speak in tongues and prophesy. And I think it's so amazing that if you study verse, uh, chapter 19 happens about 24 years after Pentecost. Pentecost happened 24 years prior to this even going on. But yet, 24 years later, the same Holy Spirit that fell in the Pentecost way fell 24 years later on these people that believed. And they began to speak with tongues and prophesied. And so we can't do away with things that are in the Word. Amen? And we also need to understand that we have been empowered to do God's will and we need to know that God has filled us. And there there are different gifts, many gifts, nine gifts that God gives. And you could say, "We well, I've had that and that's good. Continue to walk in it. Pray God. But I just pray that you would open up your hearts to Receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That it would empower you to have a life of prayer. Be a better witness for Jesus. Amen. I need so much more of that in my walk. You know, I need to be continually spirit filled so that I can rise up for Jesus. Amen. And and let God work through me. Josie said we went to New Mexico. Uh, this week, we just went over there, flew, and came back. Went to her mother's house, and it was a niece's graduation. So we weren't in the stores or anything. We just went. We flew into the airport, went to grandma's house, mom's house, and then we came back. <laughs> but you know, it's so good. I was God just did so many things. We we climbed this mountain over there. We call it the A Mountain. Uh, there's a big A on it, and it's right by the university there, New Mexico State University. And the agriculture, I think, classes always, you know, they paint it every year, freshen it up. But we call it the A Mount. I've been running that mound since I was, you know, younger than Adrian, you know, as I'm working out, you know, in boxing and all that stuff. And 
But I remember I used to get up there as a kid, and as I was coming down, I w you could see the, the city, you know, and I lived in a small town called Mesquite on the real, you know, about 14 miles outside of town. And I could see Mesquite, and you could see Las Cruces, and then it was uh, Mesilla Valley in the middle, kind of old Mesilla. But I used to pray up there. You know, I was 15, 16 years old, and I used to pray up there. And I wasn't even born again at that time. But God was working in me something. But I wasn't born again. I mean, like Josie says, we, we were, uh, she went to Catholic church, and, you know, we used to go to church once in a while. I went to a Methodist church. But there was something always inside of me that wanted more of God. And I think that's where we are all at. At times, that's why we're here. That's why we're praising God. And so, as I was praying there, and the Lord was just, you know, as as we went up there, our little nephew went. Oh my goodness, he's how old? Seven. He's seven, and he walked up there too, and he was a little behind. By the time he got up there, you know, because they do a Catholic pilgrimage up that too, and so they, there's a little altar there. And but this little seven-year-old, he comes up, he says, "Hey." You want to go praise the Lord? <laughs> and I said, sure, let's go. And we, you know, I went and prayed with him. Golly, God works in the littlest things. His spirit is alive, amen? His spirit works. And what God reminded me of that time that a few years later, when I was about 17, 18 years old, my parents got a divorce. And that's when I went off the deep end. I've shared a little bit of my story that, you know, I went off the deep end. I was lost and I was... Uh, you know, lost. <laughs> but I remember one time, Josie and I, I, we were, you know, dating. And I was just one, there was just one night that I was upset and I didn't know what I was doing. And I remember we went late at night. It was late and it was dark. And I went running, crying. I was running up the hill and I was crying and, and I fell to my knees, I remember. And, and I wanted, now I know what I wanted then. I was 17, 18 years old. I wanted the infilling of the Holy Spirit because there was something in my life that I couldn't control. My parents had gotten a divorce. I was lost. I was addicted. I was uh, drinking. I was doing things that weren't, I wasn't supposed to do, but yet I knew that God could make a way where there seemed to be no way. And I knew I couldn't do it alone. But I didn't know what I was doing. I went up there and I went to my knees and I was praying. And you know, sometimes, I don't know, hallelujah. Do you know hallelujah, what it means? It means praise God. Uh, it's, it's, it's praise God. And so that's a word that we don't understand, but we say it. And, and there's something, because that's the Spirit praying in us. And I, I fell down, and, and I didn't receive anything that day. I wasn't filled. I wasn't born again again, remember? I was not even born again. But then I, I, I fast forward 10 years later when I was 28. And I was in a service in Denver, in Lone Tree, Colorado, at Word of Life Christian Center. <clears throat> and there was a pastor preaching from uh, Ghana, Africa, Eastwood Anaba, awesome man of God. But at that time, when, before the service started, uh, the pastor's wife came up and she's, uh, she preaches. She gets up there and she stirs up the, you know, the people and you're amening and shouting and hallelujah. But I remember she's going up there and I, I was just there and, and I just felt this thing in my belly. I said, oh my goodness. You know, the fire of God, amen. And I began to just praise God. Hallelujah, praise, thank you, Jesus. I love you. And then the spirit just began to take over and speak to me and, and to be able to praise God. And so we need to not limit God, what He wants to do in our lives. Because He wants to use us in a powerful way. Because the world, all creation is waiting for you. Amen? There are so many dreams that God has placed in you. So many, uh, there's a will for your life. If you're still breathing, God wants to work through you and in you. Amen? Can He do it all by Himself? Yeah. But He wants to partner with you. He wants you to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what He's called the church to be. And we're in such a time as this that the world needs us to be fully clothed with ability to do what God has called us to do. Amen? To live holy lives. To live righteous lives. Not out of 
you know, keeping a tally that, oh, if I do so many righteous things, I'm going to heaven. No, but because you have been convicted with the love of Jesus, that he has loved you so much that you want to do good. Amen. And so as we talked a couple weeks ago, you know, there is, we know that uh, Christianity has some, there is some fanaticism and there is some crazy stuff that happens when you talk about the Holy Spirit. But as we walk, and as I believe, I believe my conviction is, and even as Foursquare is, that we are the middle of the road people. We are not off the walls, you know, hanging from chandeliers and, you know, jumping up. But we're also not a dead church. We're not a church that's frozen, amen? We're not a church that's cold and just all religious and religion, amen? We're a church that believes in the power of Jesus Christ. To empower us first, and then that we could overflow, and that out of our bellies would flow rivers of living water, and our impact can go to different areas to your family, to your kids, to your wife, and then to your work and your school and all that. We're not called to live on the high mountain, you know, chandeliers, and oh my goodness, and that dude is just weird, right? I think about when uh, Peter, James, and John, where Jesus took them, takes them up. To the mountain when he is transfigured before them. That was an awesome time. He, Jesus was transfigured. His, his face shone. And Peter, James, and, John, uh, and Moses and Elijah appeared. And Peter, James, and John said, wow, we need to build some altars here. And Jesus said, no, no, no. Let's come back down. Let's come back down. Because he had to. Because if not, they would have stayed up there. They would have stayed up there glorifying God and, and never came down. And Because down here is where people need you, where they need your help. They need your prayers. They need your prayers and your uh, petitions and your help, you know. And so we have to live the middle of the road, knowing that God has infilled me. And at times that we could be beaten up by life, but yet we come and gather as a church body to be empowered, to be refilled, to be able to be re-energized. Amen? And it's like the light switch, right? We turn on the light switch and the light's on. But if you don't pay the bills, <laughs> the light doesn't turn on, right? So there's a source of power that comes from the wires from Rocky Mountain Power, right? And so they're the source, but the light switch is the activation. And we need to remember that we're spirit-filled. God wants to fill us. He wants to use us. He wants to empower us. But we need to, as obedient vessels and as willing vessels, we need to turn on the light switch. God has empowered us to do many things, but He won't force you to do anything. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to come in you and flow out from you. However that might be. Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. And he prays in the Spirit. And he prays with his understanding. Because when you pray in the Spirit, you're speaking mysteries unto God. Is what the Bible says. I'm not even going on my verses. Jude 20. Can you put Jude 20 up there? Jude. Verse 20. It says, But you, beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, there's times in our lives that we are down. We just, you know, things happen in our life. But it says that we need to build ourselves up, praying in the Holy Spirit. I think about David. And David, when he was at... <laughs> Baby, you know the story of what? David came. He was in battle. and He comes to find his... Everything burned with fire. His wives are taken. He comes back to Ziglag and everything is burnt with fire. But the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He gets the ephod and he, he calls for Abathar, the, the high priest at that time. And he says, Abathar, bring me the ephod. And he puts the ephod on him. He prays to God and he says, God, you know, this thing happened. He says, shall I pursue and overtake? And the word of the Lord comes to him. He says, yes, you shall pursue and overtake and recover all. But see, David had to get to a point when, you know, it talks about his men wanted to stone him. He, all they knew is that everybody was dead. Uh, they were gone. All the, his possessions were gone. Everything was, his life was over. But he encouraged himself in the Lord. 
And so many times in our life, we have to encourage ourselves, build ourselves up, praying on your most holy faith. Because the earth around, the world around you, when things look bad, man, it could bring you down real quick. But that's why you have to get in your secret place. Pray to God on your most holy faith. In your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, singing in the Spirit. It talks about singing with the understanding and singing with the Spirit. And so I just encourage you today that we believe God and that we allow Him to work. And I'm gonna, I want to pray for some people, Jen, and she's gonna, the team's going to help me. God wants to use you, amen? I'm telling you what. God wants to use you. You know, like you said, Josie, from New Mexico, you're here in Laramie, Wyoming, you know? But God is always working. And He wants us to live righteous lives and holy lives and be a willing vessel for Him. Amen? We need to be empowered by Him. And so we're going to pray for those that want to receive His fullness. Receive the Spirit of God the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that we can be Spirit-filled. Because we need it more than ever. The world needs you to have it more than ever. And we talked about, we're the middle of the road people, amen? We love God with all our hearts. We believe that the gifts are there, that healing is there, that prophecy is there. That discerning of spirits is there. That word of knowledge can come to you. Word of wisdom, faith, miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues. See, the gift of tongues is given as prophecy. In a service like this, somebody can give a message in tongues, but another can interpret it. And if you don't have both working, the gift is not working correctly. But God infills us and He shows us that with the infilling in the Bible experience from the day of Pentecost to 25 years later to even now, you can expect something to bubble up, the Holy Spirit to overflow you, and that you would be able to pray with the resources of heaven. And so... Those of us that have had that experience that, yeah, I am spirit-filled, but I need a fresh touch. I need, a, I need that light switch to turn on. I need that power to be there. I want to pray for you too. And I just want to take my time today, amen, because we're not in a hurry. I, I'm not in a hurry. I hope you're not in a hurry. We still got a little bit of time. But I just want us to leave today that we know that we have been empowered by the Lord. Amen. We're a fellowship. We're people that have to help each other as we get into tough times. And there are things that happen in our lives that we need help. We need to be in unity and talk about our problems and understand. But there's some dark nights that you're all alone. And nobody's there. And you can't call nobody. But you can pray to God. You can allow God to, to work in you. You're never alone. Amen? You're never alone because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. The third person of the Godhead. He is all God, 100% God. But He lives in you. Isn't that awesome? You have all the resources of heaven right inside of you. You don't need to make that phone call. You don't need to ask anybody for help. It's good. We're here for that. Amen. But there are some times that you don't have that time. It's right now. Nobody's available. I can't make a phone call. I can't cry out. But God's there. Amen. And so we're going to pray. I'm going to put my mask on. I'm going to ask for people to come up to the front. I want these two these two rows to be pushed back a little bit. 
And I want people to come up. They want to receive the Holy Spirit. And also those that have received the Holy Spirit, but want a fresh touch. And I just pray, God is dealing with you guys. I believe that God is talking to some. I believe that God is going to just begin to minister to somebody. And I just want to pray. I, I want to pray with you. And here's how we do it. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. And so if you've been filled and you want a fresh touch, I want you just to come up. Come up now. Josie, you can come up too and pray. But if you're filled, just come up and just face this way. Yep. No, face towards me. Just, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Lorna, can you come out and come with us and pray? Hallelujah. And all those that want to be filled, just come up at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just stay up here. I'm going to give some direction. We're going to pray. And then we'll release the team. Just if you stay up here and, yeah, and you pray. In this. Hallelujah. This is Jesus doing it. Amen. We're going to all pray a prayer. And it's nothing silly. Nobody's going to yell. Nobody's going to shriek. Nobody's going to scream. We're just going to pray that God would infill us, however that may look, however that may seem. But I want you to be so brave to, to receive it. Amen. Let's pray a prayer. This is not a salvation issue. Amen. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are saved and you're going to heaven. Amen. But God wants so much more for your life. He wants to empower you to be a better witness. He wants to empower you to worship Him. He wants to empower you as you, as you pray and be effective in your prayers. Amen. I'm not saying that you aren't perfect, being effective now. But I'm just saying more. There's so much more to God. That we... You know, I think about the lukewarm church in, Rela in Revelations. It says, because you're neither cold nor hot but because you're lukewarm the Bible says that he says I spit you I vomit you out I don't want to be cold I don't want to be just lukewarm I don't know I've drinking some lukewarm milk one time that's no good <laughs> I want to be hot on fire we sang that song that said the church on fire amen and it's not for us to boast or anything. It's for us to be empowered and to be strengthened and encouraged to help our families, to help our loved ones that we love so much that we don't want to see them go to hell. We don't want to see them. We want them to be saved and set, and, and set free from bondage, from addictions, from, from drug addictions, from alcoholism, from all that stuff. And the only way that it will happen if we allow the Holy Spirit to get a hold of them and work through us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's open our hands just as we received. This is just a gift. This is just an empowerment that we receive as believers. Pray after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you, Jesus, and I ask you to fill me. I thank you that you have saved me. Well, Lord, I ask you that right now that you would fill us. Fill me with your spirit. Overflow in me. That I may be used for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Now, right now, let's just begin to worship God. Let's praise him. Praise him in your natural language. Just praise him. Just lift him up. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just pray. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit.
an army rising up. There's an army rising Jesus, 
Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have filled us with your spirit, O God. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the one who does it all. It's not man. It's only you, the power of God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just encourage you this week as you continue, just to continue to be filled. Be filled in your prayer life. We have prayer here on Wednesdays. You can join us at 6.30. But just continue to search it out. If if if. Just use your words, and, and you might say, well, it's just silly. Get the flesh out of the way. And if you get, well, I just have one word. Say that one word. It means so much. You know, when, when Adrian tells me, or even if I tell Josie, I love you, that's three words. But it means so much. I love you. 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 Continue to praise God. Can we sing that um, you provide the fire one more time? Just a couple of verses and to close up. You provide the fire. sacrifice you provide the spirit and I will open up inside you provide the fire Oh, 
fill us. You provide the Spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up. Oh, fill me up, Jesus. Fill me up, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you love the Lord, would you give him a great praise? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Did you guys, did you, shall we pray for you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Where's my... Where's Natasha? You think you can play a little bit, Natasha? I want to pray for the worship team. Hallelujah. They've been serving up here. And we need to pour out on them. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I guess I can pray right here where you guys are at, huh? Father, we thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's give God another praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I am sorry I held you a little bit too long, but you can take it up with God. <laughs> Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. Uh, if you have any questions or any you want to meet or anything, we're here. We're available. I'm available. So, you know, just reach out. Uh, God is going to use you mightily in this season. I believe that he's going to use each and every one of you in a mighty way. And don't be surprised when things happen. When people call you and say, you know, what about this? Or they begin to share with you, you know, problems that you say, why are you coming to me? I'm not a counselor. Yeah, but you carry the Holy Spirit. Amen. You carry the power of God in you. And so I just want you to know that and be encouraged this week. Amen. Amen. Next week is Father's Day. And I believe uh, Pastor Leo will be in the house. He's going to share. If you don't know Pastor Leo, he was part of our uh, Hispanic ministry. Yep. And uh, I asked him to come be with us because he's been a father to me. And he's, I'm sure, been a father to many, you know, spiritually. Uh, so we're going to have him, and it's going to be a great time. Amen? Mm -hmm. We love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you next week. <laughs>